Here's the story of how I transformed a business's brand identity from this to the actually first allow me to introduce Molly and Jake, the owners of a polymer clay business who reached out for help in designing their new brand identity. After reviewing their inquiry and determining that they would be a good fit, I emailed them to schedule a discovery call. And here is where our story begins. Okay, so I'm about to have a discovery call with a prospect and my goal during these is to ask questions that will help me gather all of the necessary information for creating a personalised project proposal. Now this includes understanding things like the client's vision, goals, project deliverables and more. Now to ensure I cover all the relevant aspects, I always follow a script. With that said, it's time for me to jump on my call. One hour later. So the call went really well and I already have such a good feeling about this project. Now here are my main takeaways. Um, so we primarily sell tools for other people who are interested in making clay earrings. We yeah. sell some clay earrings but primarily it's the clay cutters to cut out different shapes and then we also came out with a kit that has everything you need to make 40 pairs of your own earrings. So what would you say are your main goals of the business right now? Like what what are they? I feel like really our kit is our main focus right now. Um, okay. Growing that and getting more eyes on that because that's kind of a new market for us. We're selling stuff consistently, but how do we like push ourselves over where we can start converting twice as much as we are today? Like instead of doing onesie twosie, then having a great day, like how do we get that to be more consistent? So with the deliverables of the project, so what is it that you're kind of looking for and I can kind of uh, describe to you what would be best suited for you. I think for sure, we obviously want like logo, color, spot, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I know you do like kind of a main logo and then even having like a sub logo that you can put on like packaging and things yeah. would be nice. Um, and then I also think having some sort of like a pattern that we can yeah. use in like the background of packaging on our website. So yeah. those would be probably the musts. I would okay. say. With all this in mind, I'm now going to put together a proposal for this project. So this will outline how my services can provide a solution to the client's current problems and goals. I'll also provide details on the project cost, timeline, and include testimonials to establish trust with the prospect. So this morning I received an email from the prospect accepting the proposal. So this now means I can begin the onboarding process and transition them from a prospect to a client. To do this, I need to set their client portal up. Now this is a project management system I created in Notion and it serves kind of as a centralized hub for storing all project information and it will be the main point of contact between myself and the client throughout the project. However, before giving them access to their project portal, there are a few things that I need to set up. First, I need to create an invoice to collect a 50% deposit for the project and then I need to prepare a contract that outlines the agreed upon terms of the project. This includes important information such as the number of revisions, termination protocol and more. Once this is done, I'll then email the client with a link that grants them access to their portal. Okay, so it's been a week and the client is now fully onboarded. So after giving them access to their client portal, they are provided with a list of tasks to complete in order for us to proceed to the first stage of the project. Now these tasks involved paying the invoice, signing the contract, filling out a questionnaire and scheduling a strategy call with me. Speaking of the strategy call, I have about five minutes before it starts. So during this call, we delve deep into the client's business to uncover information such as their purpose, target audience, competitors and more. This will provide me with a solid foundation to develop a detailed and comprehensive strategy for the brand, which will not just help me design a visual identity that's distinct, but one that becomes Becomes the driving force behind building brand awareness, increasing sales and identifying the business as a unique player in its industry. Anyway, it is time for me to jump on the call and I'll report back after. So basically the aim of this call is just for us to dive a little deeper into your business. We're going to go through the discovery questionnaire um, that you answered and for me to really just understand more about your target audience and kind of like your mission so that I can then translate that into the visual identity when we get onto the design stage. 
So after that strategy call, I now have a bunch of information on the Clayful Co, the client's business. Now this information is crucial in ensuring that the next stage of this brand design project is executed correctly. Now, over the past week and a half, I've been busy conducting research to prepare a brand strategy presentation for the client. So this research has focused on two main areas. The first area is brand foundations. So during this stage, I analyze the information provided by the client during the strategy call to establish the core foundations of the brand. These include the brand story, mission, and values. Now, understanding these will enable me to make informed design decisions that align with the brand. The second area is brand positioning. Now, this involves determining how the brand can differentiate itself in the industry. Now, during this stage, I analyze competitors, clearly defined the brand's target audience and identified the brand's personality traits. So with the strategy now done, over the next few days, I'll be putting together a creative direction for the brand's visual identity. Now this involves using the research conducted during the strategy stage to create two mood boards. I'll then present these mood boards along with the strategy to the client in a presentation. Okay, so the presentation has been put together and I'm just about to upload it into the portal for the client to review. But before I do that, I thought I'd quickly run you through a few of the pages so you can see what I've come up with. So this page is about their business. So based on the information provided by the client during the strategy call, I put together a brief overview of the business and what it stands for. So this is intended to bring clarity to both myself and the client, as well as demonstrate my understanding of their business. Another page is the target audience. So here using the research I did into the business and industry as a whole, I identified two main audience personas. So this allows the client to clearly visualize who they're trying to attract and sell to. And it will also help me in developing ideas for the visual identity that resonates with and effectively communicates with the target audience. Now on to the mobile pages. So in this section, there are two mood boards I've created for the Clayful Co. And as you can see, each mood board showcases a different visual direction. For example, in mood board one, there's fun flowing typography, while in mood board two, there's bold sans serif type used. Now the same distinction applies to the color palette, illustration style, and overall feel. So I do this to provide the client with a choice, enabling them to make the final decision for their visual identity. Okay, so it's been a week since I last checked in and during this time, my client came back with a slight amendment to the creative direction. So they liked mood board number one, but wanted to incorporate more oranges and pinks from the second mood board. So because this still worked well with the strategy, I made the adjustment and now it looks like this. After sending it to the client, they happily approved it, which is really important because the mood board will serve as a guide when designing the visual identity. Now, if the client feels uncertain about the direction, it is crucial to go back to the drawing board and find a solution until the client feels confident with the creative direction. But with the strategy and creative direction signed off, I can now start designing. And first on my list is to source some fonts for the logo type. So I've experimented with a few different typefaces. I can't quite find what I'm looking for. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is create the logo type completely from scratch. So doing so will mean that it is fully customized as well as having this really nice handmade and playful feel, which actually links back really nicely to the business's products. It's also gonna allow me to adjust and connect the letters exactly how I want. I know it's gonna be fiddly, but I think this could work well. Okay, so after a few hours of experimenting, I think I have the one. Now I need to spend some time to finalize the concept and create variations to ensure its responsiveness. So over the last two days, I've been designing the logo suite and it's finally a place I'm happy with. So I've designed four variations. First, the primary logo, which features a really nice custom type completely made from scratch with clever meanings behind some of the letters. So for example, the loop of the L I've designed to look like an earring hook. And you'll also notice that the and co are in a different typeface to create a separation from the word Clayful. Now these have been strategically placed within the letters of Clayful to highlight the playful side of their brand. Then onto their secondary logo, which makes the logo type wider as the and co have been placed on either side of the word Clayful. Now this just allows my client more flexibility when using their logo suite. Then their Submart logo is in a stack variation where the letters have been adjusted slightly to 
fit in a square space. Then lastly, their logo mark. So this has been created for simplicity and smaller spaces. So this features the C taken from Clayful and then another C which has been mirrored and adjusted to represent Co. But there's also another meaning behind this where the first letter C represents an ear and the mirror C serves as an earring delicately hooked onto the ear. With the logo suite done, I'm clocking out for the day, but tomorrow I'll be starting on the illustrations. So the next step in my design process is to create brand assets such as illustrations. Now these additions will add personality to the brand and will help the Clayful Co stand out from their competitors. They will also provide flexibility to the client when using the visual identity across various mediums. So I'm using the pencil tool with some basic shapes as guides and then drawing with a single line to match the logo type style. So I'm gonna continue with this to see if this concept works and create some more shapes. Okay, so these are looking great. It kind of feels like something's missing as they feel a little bit too fragile and thin, which isn't the impression I want to convey for their brand and their products. I need something a little bit more sturdier. So what I'm gonna try is adding an outer path to these, which will also symbolize the polymer clay molds. So I'm gonna select the shapes, head to object, path, offset pass, and then I'm gonna just adjust the settings so it's thicker and it has rounded edges. And then what I'm gonna do is use the path finder and use minus front to subtract the line from the outer path. So I'm gonna apply that setting to all of these shapes. So with the illustrations at a point that I'm happy with, I'm gonna move on to the color palette. So I'll be using the color palette that was included in the mood board as a starting base and we'll experiment further until I land on something that works. Okay, so it's been a few hours and the color palette is now finalized. So I landed on this combination after experimenting with various shades and tones and then testing the palette alongside the logo suite to ensure readability. So over the last few days, I've been finalizing the concept, creating mock-ups, and I've put together a brand presentation ready to present to the client. But before I send it over, here's a sneak peek at some of the pages. So here I've showcased the logo suite and its variations. Now alongside this, I've annotated my designs, explaining the design decisions and the thought process behind them. Now this is crucial for helping the client understand the strategy behind the designs. Now for each logo, I've also included a mock-up to demonstrate how that specific variation would appear in action. Then on another page, I've showcased the chosen color palette and also explained why these colors were chosen, which links back to the strategy stage. And then on some other pages, I've put the mock-ups I've created, which do a really great job at showcasing the brand in action and also help to further convince the client of the concept's value. Over the weekend, Molly and Jake got back to me with feedback on the concept I presented. So let's have a look at it. So you can see here that they love the concept and direction, which is always a relief. And to see feedback like you nailed it is always a bonus. Now within the feedback, they have asked for a revision to adjust one of the illustration shapes just to ensure that it can be made as an earring mold. Since they've requested changes, I'm gonna schedule a feedback call to ensure there is no miscommunication before I begin making any changes and also to check in with Molly. So I've just got off a call with Molly to go over the requested changes. Now I'm gonna make the illustration adjustment, update the presentation and then send it over to get signed off. So it has been a few days since I last checked in to update you. The client signed off the brand presentation after the revision was made. And over the last couple of days, I've been offboarding them. This has involved sending the final invoice and once paid, exporting and packaging all the brand files and putting together a brand guidelines document. So now it's time to hand these over to the client, a process that's super easy because of the client portal. So this dedicated section holds their files, a good buy packet, links to purchase font licenses and provides a space for them to offer feedback on the project. In this video, I've shown what my process looks like when designing a brand for a client. But if you want an even more in-depth look, check out my course, The Client Process, where I go through every stage from creating contracts to hosting strategy calls. You'll also get access to over 10 premium templates, 30 guides, and 50 videos. Use the first link in the description to learn more. But if it's not for you, then you should watch this video here, where you can watch me design a logo from scratch in Adobe Illustrator.